Welcome to the Personal Finance Workbench. I'd like to tell you about the huge fail I had when I bought my first car. I made seven huge mistakes and it was fantastically painful for me. I'm sharing the details with you in the hope that you will not repeat my mistakes because everything that I did wrong with my first car buying experience can still sting you today. So there I was. It was the summer of 1985. Back to the Future was in all the theaters, Duran Duran had the top song, and I needed wheels. I had just moved to Silicon Valley in California, and a car was absolutely essential to getting around. So I went off to a local car dealer. Mistake number one. I didn't do any research before going to the dealer. I didn't look into reliability or mileage or anything. I chose the car based on the recommendation of one buddy. At the dealer, I spent only a few minutes looking at cars and talking to a sales guy. I quickly decided on which car I wanted. Mistake number two. I went shopping alone. I should have brought a wingman or wingwoman. You know, someone that you trust and who could talk sense into me. You need a friend or a relative with you when making a big decision like buying a car. The friend or relative can act as a buffer between you and the professional salesperson. The professional salesperson really knows how to close a deal. And I had nobody to stop me from doing something stupid. So, I did something stupid. Mistake number three. I didn't negotiate. We settled on a price. Well, honestly, I didn't negotiate on the price. The salesman told me the price, and I pretty much agreed to it. I didn't even try to get the price down. I didn't even try to ask for something like free oil changes or floor mats or anything. Nothing. Boy, I was a terrible negotiator in those days. Live and learn. Mistake number four. I signed the contract before I read it. Well, I thought that I had read part of the contract, but I really didn't understand everything that I was reading. This is where a wingman would have been really useful. I was young and stupid, and I had no idea what I was signing in that contract. I also had no idea what a fair price should be. You'll recall that I didn't do any research. Here's where it came back to haunt me. I overpaid. By a lot. Mistake number five. I wildly overpaid. I had been building up my credit score with credit cards. I always paid my bills on time, even when I had to use one credit card to pay another. But that's a whole other story. Anyway, I had good credit, but little cash. So the dealer gave me a loan. Wasn't that nice of him? Oh yeah, the interest rate was, wait for it, over 15%. Ouch. Mistake number six. I didn't understand the terms of the loan. This was the mistake that cost me the most money in the end. Ignorance is expensive. It was a five-year loan. At the time, I figured that the five-year loan wouldn't be a big deal. I had a job, and I assumed that I could pay off the loan early. Paying off the loan early would save me money on the interest. Wrong. I later learned that I was taken to the cleaners, and I had no idea that it was happening. Here's what I didn't know. The bank that gave me the loan used a special accounting rule. This was the Rule of 78s. The Rule of 78s is great for the bank, but not for the customer. Let me explain. Have you ever heard an advertisement that said, no prepayment penalty? Well, the Rule of 78 is effectively a prepayment penalty. Two years after I bought the car, I tried to pay off the loan early. That's when I realized that I was in a trap. The bank charged me most of the interest up front, in the beginning of the loan. There was no advantage in trying to pay off the loan early. I had already paid off most of the interest because the bank used the rule of 78. Paying off the car early would save me almost nothing. Mistake number seven. It was a horrible car. A horrible car. The car that I bought overheated all the time. Remember, this was in California, in the summer. It was hot, and there was a lot of traffic. 
Whenever I got stuck in traffic, I had to turn off the air conditioner, otherwise the car would overheat. Also, whoever put it together in the factory made a mistake. One of the bolts on the valve cover was cross-threaded. The whole engine vibrated at around 53 miles per hour. It sounded terrible. But the dealer refused to do anything about either problem. This was before the Lemon Laws. Once again, my youth and inexperience worked against me. So, all in all, it was a terrible car buying experience. For those of you that love numbers, here you go. Sale price of the car, $10,208. Monthly payment, $244.48. The total of the payments was $14,668 and the interest I paid was $4,460. I got screwed. That is a ridiculous amount of interest on that loan. Pain is a powerful teacher. I wrote out a check every month for 60 months. I made the same payment 60 times and paid all of the interest on the loan. Forever thereafter, whenever I borrowed money to make a big purchase, I read the fine print very carefully. I will never again borrow money with a prepayment penalty or where the rule of 78 is being applied. All I can say in my defense is that I was young and stupid. Please learn from my mistakes. Good luck to us all.